today. Okay, so hopefully that you have a good term break at home or at least go out somewhere. Okay, so essentially today what we are continuing on is your sequence input output. Okay, in the meeting chat, I have the l8.py. That is the script that we are using today. I can't put everything together already. Although you have changed the file names and so on, the file path at least. So we are looking at a few different things, continuing with um, how do we pass a sequence. Okay. So the first part is a bit of continuation, a bit more passing and reading sequences is something that we have done in the last lecture. In lecture seven, we already how learn how to read your Jim Bank file, and then lecture six, we've read your FASTA file. Okay, so we'll go through a little bit about that. So I touch and go. The next step is how do we uh, able to use BioPython to actually search for things online? That means can you search NCBI directly using BioPython? There are ways to do that. Okay, so that may be very useful. If what you are trying to do is okay, can I find all the 1000 gene 1000 genes that is with this name we can be quite done, done quite easily um also when we look at let's say when you have multiple sequences your multiple fasta sequences in the se same sequence file can we actually ask biopython to make it into a directory or not, not directory, dictionary so we can also do that it makes our life much easier finally is if we have a our own sequence can we actually produce a sequence file and here what we are going to produce is a FASTA file okay. Okay. so what we have done is um, bio sequence the bio python sequence io io means input output okay so it's very important we have already covered in the last few lectures and sequence record is uh, the basic data type for any sequences okay. So this is what we have done in single record. We have actually used read, read, uh, or pass, and then read your um, sequence files. But use the next one is what is what we do. We can use pass to actually read multiple record at one go. Okay. If you use sequence io dot read, it only read the first record. Then you have to go using the next statement. It, so we seldom want to do this unless it is a very big file. Very often we will just pass the whole file into memory first. So everything goes into um, into a handler. So your sequence IO dot pass. Okay, then you actually use a for loop to bring out individual sequences. Now a recap before you forget. The difference between a FASTA file and a GIMBANK file for reading purposes is you just change the file type. Okay. The file name will not tell BioPython or will not tell sequence IO whether what file it is because you can put any file name you want. You can put any extension that you want. Okay. So this is the two main thing that you have learned before. Another way that you can actually pass rather than using this for loop is using a next command. So let's say you have a, a pass, okay, so without a for loop, then this is your iterator. You can use the next function to actually go to the next in the list. Okay, okay. We seldom do this, but just showing you that this can be done. The reason why you, you, can, you want to do this is so that you don't have to read everything in memory. You can process one record at a time. Okay. It is quite useful if your record is very big. For example, you want to download, let's say, all the chromosomes of a human. Okay. So 23 chromosomes are going to use up a few gigabytes of memory. Okay. So unless your memory space is large enough, uh, if you are using Mac, you also have a huge problem. Um, okay. By the way, who is using Mac here? Anyone using Mac? Uh, Any Mac I users? Do. Ryan? Okay, Ryan using Mac. Uh, that's all right. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, if you're using Mac, you realize that Mac have this thing known as a dump file. As you 
never, the longer you are of not rebooting your Mac, your hard disk space becomes more and more reduced. It's because of the dumb files, a DUMP, uh, the dumb records. Okay, so once in a while you have to um, reboot your Mac. Okay, same thing for Windows. The for Windows system, very important will be this. Okay, let me just go and show you how it looks like. <clears throat> okay, let's say never, especially if you have multiple hard disks. So now I have in my computer has only one hard disk or one partition. So my C drive, if let's say you have your hard disk is partitioned into C drive and D drive, please do not your, your primary hard disk, the one that you install Windows on, make sure that there is a lot of memory space left. Okay, because it actually uses this as a heap files. Basically, if you try to read a large um, data, data system or a large piece of data and your memory actually runs out, it will use your hard disk, the remaining hard disk space, as though it is um, uh, your RAM, your uh, memory chips. So that's why if your mem if your hard disk actually goes to zero, Windows crash very easily. Okay, so this, please take note. <clears throat> so this is when you want to read a, a large file. So there is ways of doing small records which is simple, but when it comes to large records, large um, data, you they have to find more efficient ways. Okay. This is um, just a few things to show you. So let's look at <clears throat> the very important part. We have already done this. We list down or we can actually process everything and force every the entire gym band record, let's say with multiple gym band record into a list. We can actually do that, just that we never show you that was actually done before. Okay, so in, instead of actually running through a loop and then putting things into a list, you can actually force from here directly everything into a list. It will work as well. Okay, so this is a more convenient one if you want to do that. Okay, so this lecture is a fair bit of convenience methods for you to use. Okay, depends on which one you want. And it's also because of all these different methods that you can use. Um, your program is actually quite characteristic of yourself, the style that you write. Okay. So you can actually do that. Okay, this is the next part. How are we going to get the sequence online? Okay, so for here, um, I'm just going to use my editor. Okay, so here, this is the first part. I've actually given you this file already. So how do I get a gym bank record from NCBI using two functions, your e-search and e-fetch? If you go to BioPython, here chapter 9 tells you how to access NCBI databases. So all the database in NCBI, you can access it. Okay, from PubMed all the way to everything else your uni gene and so on. You can access it. So there's a whole list of um, database that you can access, which is similar to here. Okay, So you can access all this, this whole list of databases inside um, BioPython as well. So how do you do that? Number one is you have to import this thing called Entrust. Okay, Entrust is like the Google of NCBI. And what you need is you have to tell Entrust who you are. So if um, you are found to be violating, overusing it, they at least know who to call, who to email you. So for example, let's come to here again. Okay. So there are restrictions. Entrust it actually has a restriction. For example, you can go to NCBI, the user requirements. It will tell you what you can or cannot do. It takes up a bit of time. It will tell you what it can or cannot do. For example, how many um, requests you can do per per day. Okay. So it does explain a bit to you. Now, in short, <clears throat> try to actually use this entry system during weekends or out of US um, peak hours. 
That means it's actually very useful for us in Singapore because our daytime is at nighttime. Okay. So again, this is up to you. Generally, they are quite lenient with it. Okay, I say generally, yeah. If they are if they found that there's a massive abuse, they can actually ban your access. And they ban the access by banning your IP. Hopefully you know how IP address work, right? Anyone do, do not know how IP address work? Let's say what is my IP? I can actually go and find out my IP. Um, come on. Okay, so IP config. So this is my IP address. Okay. Uh, no, this is my connection. Yeah, this is actually my IP address. Okay. So my so my IP address tells me who I am. One nine two is Singapore. Um, NCBI can ban any level, so they can actually ban the last um, three subnet, which is that means everything here. That means all the six two hundred sixty five computers cannot be used or they can ban the next level. That had been done before. Okay, so when you are, if you are actually, let's say, doing your uh, SIP in NUS or any of these places, please do not abuse the system because if it get banned, you are in very big trouble. Okay, generally, they will kind of figure out who you are in the first place before NCBI will ban you. Which means that if NCBI actually bans this 168, right? And if you're in NUS, it means that actually it bans the entire NUS network. And everybody will kill you for that. Okay, please do not make that happen. Huh? What is some cases of abuses? For example, you download too many things. See, if there are more than 100 requests, that means if you, you can actually run write a program to actually request every second or every, you know, as fast as you can run. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay. So if you need a lot, you see, API key, you can actually make at most 10 requests per second. Okay. This is if you're the API key, that, that means you have to register yourself with NCBI first. Otherwise, you should request at most three queries per second. That means you fetch like three records per second. Okay. But if your computer is running fast enough, you can fetch like 30 records per second. Okay. And having said that, I'm a pretty good abuser of the system. I kind of try as much as I can until I get back to some extent. Okay. So very useful. You should always, this is no longer optional. Huh? You should always give the email address so they can contact you if there's any problem. Usually NCBI will contact you first before they ban you. Okay, This parameter is actually uh, mandatory already for uh, 10 years. Okay. So this is how it works. Uh, you can actually start to read all this information yourself. E-search is to search for a database. So what I'm doing here is, let's say I my entrance email. I am actually searching nucleotide database with the term Sonic Hedgehog and return maximum of 40. Okay. So it will be as good as if I go to NCBI myself or yeah, go to the web service and I just put in Sonic Hedgehog. So it will be as good as doing this. And then what you do is you return the first 40 records. The first 40 records is actually returned based on this GI number, which is an older number, not in use now, but it's a legacy system called the um, gene index number, gene bank index number. Okay. So let's run this and see what happens. You, you have a handle. After the handle, this is like the search handle, then you use entrance, read 
command to actually read the ID list. Okay, so let's run this, these few lines, and you will see what I have. Okay, so what is inside my ID list? ID list is just a list of numbers, the first 40 numbers. Okay, then the term tells me how I actually search for Sonic Hedgehog and so on. Okay, it has two 4271 records, which is actually the total number of records here. Okay, so it returns the same thing, just that it returns in a way that you can handle it. Okay, so the, let's say the first one is 60391722, and let's see, do we have that? Six zero probably not here. Yep, that's it's not here. Yet. Okay, so you can actually return all everything. Let's say your return max, you can actually return the total number four thousand of them or two thousand four hundred seventy one. Then let's say what you do is, if for example, I want the first ID list. Okay, so here, if I were to because this is a dictionary i can just return the list of ids so this is my id list okay and let's say i want to find the first record and this is exactly what i do i want to find the first record i also use efetch now because this is a search then the next step is to fetch the record i fetch the record for the first sequence using this ID and I return the data type which is GB which is called Jim Bank file. I want a Jim Bank record return as text. Okay. So here after which the handle I read as a ask uh, sequence IO to read it as a Jim Bank record. Okay. So I go on the next two line. Uh, sequence IO is not defined. Oops, I forgot to define sequence IO. So let's see. Uh, maybe this guy up. Okay. So now the sequence record contains the same as my gym band record that I read from a regular file. Okay. So Jasmine, what are the common instances of abuse? For example, if I were to say that I return a maximum of let's say 10,000, okay, and I change this to look through the entire list, so I can say that I can do this. Okay. Or ID in So this guy will keep fetching one record at a time for the next 10,000 records. And if the frequency of um, pulling out the record is so fast, it can be deemed as uh, abuse. Does it make sense to you? Now, in fact, if I were to do this alone, it is not, it is still okay. But let's say, what happened if I'm trying, I'm doing a big project, I want to look for 10 different um, type of genes. I will, I will actually run multiple scripts of itself. So I'm like, I'm like, you know, just hitting on NCBI all day long. Yeah, that itself is a uh, abuse itself. Okay. So that's what you have just have to take note. Lah. It is ID, so I change it to this ID. Okay. So but ra rather than showing you that, um it will take a long time, but it is uh, quite useful. Okay. I have used this method to download a lot of things from NCPI. 
So you can actually change, you can actually change this database into other database, other database. You can use protein. You can use PubMed. The results come back will be different. Okay. So this is how you can fetch records from NCBI yourself. Okay, it's actually through a script and it makes your life easier. You don't have to download the files yourself. You can actually download your files whenever, download the data whenever you need it. So this is a very useful script for you to run. <clears throat> so we go to the next one. In fact, this is what we have. Okay. The entrance is email is for you to put your own email um, and so on and so forth. You can fetch anything. Okay. You can look, use it to look through as well. Um, I have used it to fetch almost the entire part map before. It will take months, but it's doable. Okay. So now let's say when you have a very big file. Okay. The very, most often we want to actually get the whole record. Let's say you have multiple records for your FESTA file into a dictionary. We can do that as well by using this sequence IO to dict function. Okay. This is very flexible, but it's used a lot of memory. So how do I do that? Let me just go to the next part. So this is the, the lines that I'm trying to have. Okay. So what I did is similarly, I pass, use the sequence IO pass to read my Sonic Hedgehog file. Okay. So my Sonic Hedgehog file, let me just read it. So now my Sonic Hitchcock is all red. Festa. It's a generator. And um, what I did in the past is I will use a for loop to put things in, right? Okay. So what I can do is just put the handler, file handler, into sequence IO dot uh, to dict. Okay. So I convert it into a dictionary. And let's see how we can. Get that? Let's convert everything to dictionary. But all this is done in memory. That's why it's very uh, memory heavy. Then if you go to Sonic Hitchcock underscore dict, you find that it's actually now a dictionary. See, this is the um, key and then the, rec the value is actually the entire uh, sequence record. So what we have done in your tu tutorial, this is eight, right? Tutorial six is exactly, you can do it in one line. Remember we spent a lot of time making it into a um, dictionary. You can actually do it in one line now. Okay. So let's say if I want, uh, let's say this guy, how to process this. Okay, I can just say that it will be Sonic Hedgehog. So this is my sequence record, and then I can start pulling things out. I can have my sequence record dot, um, let's say, what do I want? Description. So this is, we have done that all this before. Okay, you can do it uh, to get the sequence. Okay, you have a sequence and so on. So all this, you are quite familiar with it already. Just that it uses a lot of memory. So far, any problem here? Any issue? If yes, say yes. If no, say no. I need some response. No, no issue, no. Okay. All right. Okay, so the next step is to use another function known as index. Okay, index reads this way. It actually is a useful ground, but it will not process everything into a dictionary first. It only process into a dictionary whenever you require. So it's on demand. Okay. So if you look at these lines, 
between two and three. Okay, between these two and three, right? What you have is, um, you have the index first. Okay, so what I do not need is I do not need to do the pass. I just call the index directly. So this step. Uh, hey, where am I? This step you still have to use, you have to pass the file first and convert it into the dictionary. But if you use index, you don't even have to pass the file first. Okay? It will be converted on, on, um, on the flight. So this line is actually missing. So you go to directly index, because if you do pass, then you have to change your dict, right? Now you don't have to, you just do the use the index command. And then what you end up with is you can actually collect all the keys because it's almost looking at dictionary collect all the keys first okay and then you can process it which key you want so let us run this up to here so i the the festa file is actually converted into an index and then i pull out all the keys from the dictionary into a name list and then i print the name list okay so let's try what happens So I I print on the name list. Now it becomes everything has a name list. So these are all the records that is inside my Festa file. Okay. And then if I want to call any one of them, I just call SSH index and run it as though it's a dictionary. Let's say I want the last one. Let's put it in. And you produce what I have for the previous section, your sequence records. Just that this using the index function or index um, method, it doesn't read the entire FASTA file into memory first. It just holds on to the FASTA file and then go into a FASTA file to find whichever you want. Okay. This means that you can actually save your memory for a lot of other things. Especially, let's say if your FASTA file is a few megabytes or a few gigabytes even, you can have a very large FASTA file. Okay, so please be careful with it. If you want to run, it's very common to read large FASTA file and then your computer starts to die on you. Okay, so this is a um, halfway method. Okay, so go and try all these different methods as well. Okay, read the dictionary in memory is quite useful or you do a uh, index style. So there is no pass statement here. You just do an index file yourself. So it's up to you. Which method do you prefer? If you have a large file, um, then use this index function. If you have a small file, then you can use the to dictionary function. Okay. Depends on operation itself. Which one is faster? Of course, to dictionary is faster. It's faster to read everything into memory first than to keep probing your hard disk. All right. Um, actually, if you keep probing your hard disk, your hard disk can die quite easily if your files is very fragmented. OK, so the next one is actually just the last part. How do you write your own sequence records? Okay, so let me show you how I did it. <clears throat> so this is the last section. So you can actually use a sequence record yourself. <clears throat> and within the sequence record, <clears throat> there are actually a few different components. You need this sequence itself. Okay, what it gives you is just a sequence. It can be protein sequence because I, um, I call it a generic protein sequence. If it's a DNA sequence, then you use your unambiguous DNA. Okay. So basically, this is my protein sequence. Okay. I wrap it up in the sequence here. Then what I have is I give it the ID. I give it the description. Okay. So I, I give it these two things. So I have record one, record two. After that, what I simply need to do is 
to put so record one is actually like a festa record record two is also a festa record okay so this is the sequence part then the id and then the um description so let me just truncate these lines it's a bit cumbered. do not really like the Later, I'll pass you the new version of the file. So I put everything into a list. Then all I need to do is to call my sequence IO again, use the write function. I write my records, which is actually the list of uh, sequences in the same order. I write it out as my FESTA file. This is the file name. The file type is FESTA file. Okay. So Let's try this and see what happens. What does it give us? What I'm expecting is a my festa, my example dot festa. Okay, does it give us the same thing? So I have all this, and then you tell me how many records is written. So it's two. So uh, I need to just go to my lectures and then uh, where am I? Just, just, just. Push. Okay, it will be the one two. Ah, then it's go all the way onto my user Morris already. So let's go there. Open, 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 open. Doesn't matter. Okay, users. It got stuck here because I forgot to change the um, path. So now I open it up. Okay, and then this is my Festa record, which is exactly what I have just now. Okay. Which is essentially this okay, kind of extra space here. So if you do everything, um, oops, what am I doing? Basically, this is how you write your FESTA record. If you look at it, uh, small. see, it will give you identical M, M, Y, Q, Q, something. Okay, and then the ID will be GI bar 1415 something, something. something. Okay. So this is actually how you write a record. Most of the time, you only need to write a FESTA record. You seldom need to write a gym bank record. So I haven't tried it myself. Let's try if we can write a gym bank record. Okay. Let's do this. And let's say I call it a gym bank. And this call it a gym bank record. Oops. I'm not sure. Let's see if it works. This is my editor. Why did I do it this way? Yeah, it actually gives me some error. Okay. So it doesn't give you a lot of information. So most of the time, what you do is you only need to write a FESTA record. You seldom need to write a Jim Bam record in the first place. Okay. So at least when you have multiple sequences, you can write your own FESTA record if you want to. Because Jim Bam record actually gives you a lot more information that you do not need. If you have sequences, your FESTA record, you can actually send it to your multiple sequence alignments and so on. Okay, so that will be quite useful for you. Okay, so I've done this, it will not work. So any problem so far? This is a short lecture, actually very short. In fact, we've come to the end of it already. So this is exactly what I put in just now. Anyone have any problems? If you're okay, then raise up your hand. If you're not okay, then we have deal with questions.
If you're okay, raise up your hand. If you're not okay, then ask. So this is almost like what is left behind from the last two lectures. We kind of complete it up. Are you in the process of doing your project already? Okay. Anyone, any questions? Okay. Ryan, you okay? Rebecca, okay? Jehan, all right? Ambrose, okay. Jasmine, Rebecca. Rebecca, do you raise your hand just now? Oh, you raise up, put it back again. Ambrose, are you all right or not? You are extremely quiet today, which is very unlike you. Ambrose. Jasmine, are you okay? Finish? Are you all okay? Do you understand? Okay, let's see. No tutorial. Yes, there's no tutorial. I already told you. See? No tutorial. The first one. Yeah, there's, there's no tutorial. Okay, there's no tutorial. That's why you're quiet. Okay, that's fine. Yes. So these are, okay, you can put down all your hands. So these are kind of filling up all the little gaps that um, is left behind from the last two lectures. Okay. So anyone with problems Start to have start to do your um we you call that project. Please do start ah. you don't have a lot of time and also your learning portfolio is due quite soon. Okay, let me emphasize you need at least eight entries. At least eight are EIGHT, at least eight entries. Nothing? All oh, okay? If all okay, then that's all for today. And um, anything you can message me, there will not be any tutorial. Next, there will not be any lessons on Thursday and Friday. But please use it to discuss your project. If somebody want to talk just now, who is that? Okay, that's all for today. Have fun. Bye bye. Oh, uh, before you go, do you want the updated version of this? I think I just give you lah. Okay. What? Nah? What is my PowerPoint doing? Okay. Well, uh, just let me get my stuff sorted out. Um, what am I doing? Lectures, lectures, lectures. Just okay, E8. Um, okay, how do I get this here? Okay, Rebecca, 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 Rebecca. Uh, huh. No, nothing. I'm just uh, replace. Okay, so you can go and take the new one.